Hey, uh, Reggie. Hey, man. You uh, know what's happening next week? We're reopening for in-person worship. Oh, you know. Did you register yet? I haven't registered yet, but that's because registration has to open. Registration opens this Sunday at 3 p.m. We can't wait to see you back here in the building with us. Next week's a little different, something special. We are having just our 10 a.m. service. That's it, 10 a.m. So whether you attend 8 or 1215, make sure you join us for 10 a.m. Whether it's in person or virtual, we're going to be excited to see you there. But then the following week, November 14th, 14th. 14th, we're reopening to how many services? Two services. We're going to have our 8 a.m. service and we're going to have our 10 a.m. service. So listen, whichever your preference is, we hope that you'll join us for in-person worship. Now, of course, we're still remaining online virtual for all three. So whether you're an early riser for 8 a.m. and want to watch us at home or you're going to catch us right before lunch at 12.15, we can't wait to have you join us for worship. All right, let's head into worship. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for surely the Lord is in this place. Well, happy Lord's Day, happy Sunday, Baptist Grove. It's another day that the God, that the Lord has allowed us to come into his presence with singing, knowing that he is good, that he is merciful, that he is powerful and we bless his holy name. Welcome to this virtual, sacred virtual worship experience. Welcome to our online visitors. We pray that you would put in the chat rooms and notice that you're here. We pray that you would be encouraged on this Sunday. Now let us, let us, let us look to him in prayer. Kind Father, we thank you for this golden opportunity. We thank you for this opportunity to bless your holy name. We thank you for this opportunity to lift our hands, to praise you, to worship you, to honor you for who you are. You are the God of protection. You are the God of peace. You are the God of another chance. You are the God of encouragement. And we just come here at 10 a.m. to tell you thank you. Thank you for being good. Thank you for being mighty. Thank you for being powerful. We honor your great name today. Your name is sweet. Your name is awesome. Your name is magnificent. God, if we had a thousand tongues, it would not be enough to tell you thank you. Father, we pray that you would sit in the middle of this service on this morning, oh God. Have your way. Move like you've never moved. Save like you've never saved. Touch like you have never touched and we'll be careful to give your name praise glory and the honor and we ask all of this with the forgiveness and sin in jesus name we do pray amen well it's time to praise that's his great name this morning come on put your hands together hey we love to call your name it's something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name we love yeah it's something we cannot explain that happens when we your great name come on say your now yeah hey sing we love, we love yeah call anybody your love name to call that name this morning oh his name is great his name is sweet his name is powerful when we proclaim your great name your great name, your great name. Your great name. Your great name. Your great name. sing king 
There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Do you believe it this morning? There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in your name. Come on and help me sing this power. Set. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, I believe there's power in his name. I got experience this morning. I know what the power of the name of Jesus can do for you. So much power. And I like this part. It says, say, think Sunday morning to you and welcome. We've been uplifted in song 
Let us continue our praise and worship through prayer. Let's take this time to turn away from our daily distractions and give our attention to the living God. Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for knowing each of us by name and knowing the hairs on our head. We thank you for your countless gifts of grace and mercy. We extend all honor and praise to your name. We know we don't merit the goodness that you've given us, but with 10,000 tongues, we could never say thank you enough. We surrender ourselves to you, God, and ask forgiveness of our sins, known and unknown. Pour into us a heart of sanctification. God, we welcome you into this service this morning. Through our songs and our prayers, we worship you. We ask that we know the presence of the Holy Spirit here with us today. Be in this place today, God. Have us be led by your Spirit to praise you. Have our hearts overflow and our mouths proclaim your divine greatness. We thank you for the grace you've given us and the time to come before you this morning. Accept our praises in Jesus' name. We thank you for your promise. Father, pour into our pastor this morning so that he might deliver a mighty word. Open our hearts and our minds as we surrender ourselves to you. Have your word ring true within us so we are born with the power of the Holy Spirit. Fill this church with your presence. Fill our lives with your love. Fill our mouths to speak your glory. Father, these and all blessings we ask in your name and in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hey, BGC family, we're so glad to have you with us today. If this is your first time joining us, let us know. Give us an I'm new or first time in the chat so we know you're here and we can give you that warm BGC welcome. Listen, family, we've been gone for a long time, but guess what? We are reopening for in-person worship. Today? Nope, not today, but next, next, Sunday, week, next Sunday, we'll be back in the building. So what's happening today? Today, we're registering for next week's in-person worship service. So I can go on the website. Go on the website. And I can click the registration button. That's right. And bring the whole family. And bring the whole family. Starting today at three. Today at three. All right. So you wanna make sure you get on the website, register for your family so you can join us next Sunday. But next Sunday is a little different than normal. Next Sunday, we're only gonna have our 10 a.m. service. Just 10 a.m., one big service to celebrate being back in the building. But following that, we're reopening for 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. services. 1215 will remain virtual. We hope you join us there. If you can't make it in person, but we're excited. We're so excited to be back in the building opening multiple services. That's right, we missed you so much and we can't wait to see you on next Sunday. Hey kids, guess what? Fifth Sunday, what's happening? Virtual Children's Church. That's right, Virtual Children's Church. So make sure you log in today at 1215. To join, make sure you go to the calendar on the kids page and click the Zoom link. We'll see you there. Hey family, this month has been Cancer Awareness Month. And this Sunday, the last Sunday of the month, we want to remember those who have been struggling with cancer. We got a story for you today, but before that, we wanna let you know about our cancer ministry here at Baptist Grove. That's right, here at Baptist Grove, we have our Hope for the Journey ministry, who supports those who are struggling, battling, and fighting the fight of cancer and their families. This ministry is making a major impact in the lives of those who have been affected by cancer. So we want you to check out this story about somebody who's battling cancer, been through the battle of cancer, and has been impacted and supported by our Hope for the Journey ministry. Check it out. I never once asked why me, because why not me? Because there are millions of people that are going through different things and I thank God every day that he has brought me through the toughest time in my life. My name is Diane Peterson, and I've been a member here since 2018 or the beginning of 19. July 1st, 2019, I was very excited because it was the birth, gonna be the birth of my fifth grandson. But I also knew that was the day I was gonna get the call with my results. The way God works, is wonderful because even though I knew I was getting that phone call, I was at peace 
sat with my son and son-in-law and daughter, saw the, my new grandson and everything, and was able to spend time. Well, at four o'clock, I said, okay, I'm gonna leave now and go home. And I was walking down the corridor of Rex Hospital and the phone rang. And that's when I got the phone call. I had stage two invasive ductal carcinoma. It was very aggressive. Well, I sat there after I hung up the phone and I cried. I got in my car and I cried all the way home. Then I got home, <laughs> I cried again. After I cried at home, I went and washed my face and said, okay, now it's time to get busy. I am one year survivor as of November, October this year. And coming to church made a very big difference to me. The members of the church and Hope for the Journey made sure that when my daughter couldn't be with me for my treatments, there was always somebody there to sit with me through every appointment, every chemo, even if I fell asleep on them. <laughs> you know, it, I felt bad, but they didn't feel bad. They made sure that I had someone there and made sure I was not alone. It made it very easy to know that God has put this church and the people at this church in my path to help me through the toughest part of my life. I mean, I had the greatest support system, and that is very important. It's a life-changing experience. And through the experience of having breast cancer, I feel as though I can get through anything. Everything else that has come up on me since then, I consider that small. I really, truly am thankful though that I did make it through my first year, <laughs> you know? And like I said, the journey isn't over because I still have surgery coming up. So I know he'll see me through this as well. Come on, how many of you know our God is a healer? How many of you know our God is able to heal? How many of you know our God can and will heal as we trust and as we put our faith in him? Sister Diane Peterson testified, and her testimony is and should be an encouragement to all who are believing God for healing. And not just healing, but you're believing and you're trusting God for miracles. Hallelujah. We know that our God is still a miracle worker. Our God is still still able. Our God is still performing wonders. And if you believe that, and if that is your experience, if that's your faith, right now in the comment section, will you just write, I believe God can. I know God will. In the comment section, will you just begin to testify? Now is not the time to remain silent. We give God the glory, and we give him the honor, and we give him all the praise on this morning. We also are interceding and praying for individuals in our congregation, the prayer petitions that we were notified about this week, we are calling their names in prayer. And so this week specifically, we want to pray for Sister Denise Warren. We want to pray for Sister Denise Warren uh, in God's comfort and God's consolation uh, to be upon her as she has lost a loved one. We pray for God's consolation during this time. Uh, we also want to pray uh, for the Tatum and Deloach families. We want to pray for them as they also uh, have lost a very significant uh, person in their lives and friend. And so we keep them lifted in our prayers. Uh, we are also uh, praying that God will continue to manifest his power like never before in our church. And we're believing God over our future. We're believing God for his direction and his wisdom. And part of that is believing God uh, as we move forward to discuss the bylaws that have been placed upon the church's website for a while now. Tomorrow night, we are coming to discuss the business of the church. And as I said, the business of the church ought to support the ministry life of the church and reflect the will of God according to the word of God. And so uh, tomorrow night, we're coming to discuss the bylaws and to vote on the bylaws. It is a virtual meeting. It will start tomorrow at 7 p.m. 
and the Zoom information will be emailed to you today at 5 p.m. If you do not receive that email, please send an email to life at baptistgrovechurch.org. This is a virtual church empowerment for members only. Amen? Amen. Now, on next week, hallelujah, next Sunday, we will be in the sanctuary in person corporately magnifying and praising the name of our God. How many of you know that's a reason to give God thanks? That's a reason to give God praise right now. Hallelujah. I am excited and I'm thankful that next Sunday we will be here to lift up the name of Jesus corporately. I thank God for the virtual experience and what we've been able to do through technology in this season. But how many of you know there is nothing like being in the presence of the Lord with other believers to magnify the name of God? There is nothing like corporately lifting up the name of Jesus together. And so we are going to be here next week. And I pray that this sanctuary is full. Hallelujah. I pray, uh, following all the social distancing requirements that we have, I pray uh, that as registration opens up, that you and your family are some of the first ones. Why? Because you're alive right now. We're alive right now because the Lord has kept us and it's by his mercies that we are not consumed. Now, here's what I want to say to you. As I mentioned to you, I speak from the perspective of a pastor. I speak from the perspective of one who is called to remind the people of the holiness of God. Our God is holy, and our God is deserving of a holy worship and a consecrated praise. And worshiping God in consecrated space, I believe, encourages our holiness as we worship and reverence the name of God, that we can't just worship God any kind of way. And I believe that it's time for us to return back to the sanctuary to praise and magnify the name of God. We have resumed so many other aspects of our lives. I know homecomings are happening right now. I know football games and everything are happening right now. I know we're going out to eat at restaurants and doing things. Thank God, I pray that you are vaccinated. My prayer is that as you have resumed other activities, that you will not put corporate worship on the back burner, that you will not say, I'm not ready to come back to the sanctuary of God, not when it's God who has kept us, and God is the reason why we can go about doing other activities anyway. My prayer is that we will prioritize being in the house of worship to magnify the name of God. So I look forward to seeing you in the house of worship on next week. Now here's what I wanna to say to you next week. We will have one worship experience at 10 o'clock. We will have one worship experience at 10 o'clock. That service will be streamed. Normally we stream at 8, 10, and 12, 15. Next week we will stream at 10 o'clock and we will restream at 12, 15. We will stream at 10 o'clock live though. And so I pray that you are with us in the sanctuary and for those who are unable to make it, I pray that you will be with us online. Now, uh, if you have been encouraged, if you've been encouraged and strengthened in this season through what we've been able to do through technology, thank God that we've been able to continue to share the word and our reach has expanded as well. That is because of the faithfulness of those who have been on the front lines from day one when we had to close the doors of the sanctuary. And that, uh, I'm grateful uh, for those who have been on the front lines and those who have been serving in our AV ministry. Will you help me shout out our AV ministry right now? Will you just help me shout them out and say, thank God for the AV ministry. Thank God for every volunteer. Thank God for everyone who operates the, the uh, cameras. Thank God for everyone who operates the soundboard. Thank God for everyone who operates all of the technology that is necessary to continue effective ministry in this season. And not only our AV team, but I wanna thank God for our worship ministry, amen. I thank God 
for our worship ministry, leading us so dynamically and powerfully in this season. God be praised for them. Just shout out our worship ministry as well. We thank God for these who are serving the Lord faithfully here at Baptist Grove Church. Now I want to ask you, as I always do, what time is it? What time is it? And what do we do? We give the Lord praise that we have it to give. We give God praise that we have it to give because we understand everything that we have comes from God. It's in our hands, but it belongs to the Lord. And if you know that what you have belongs to him, then I pray also that you will honor him with your resources. That you will be a good steward over that which God has given you. Good stewardship is giving in the way that God has prospered you to give and giving in the way that God has commanded us to give. Good stewardship is also managing what is left in a way that is faithful unto God. And so my prayer is that we will be good stewards over our resources, that we will sow into good ground, that we will sow into good ground where the work of ministry is going forth and the kingdom is being advanced. And Baptist Grove Church is good ground. Hallelujah. It is good ground as ministry goes forth, as the community is reached, as the word is proclaimed, as people are being discipled in our church for the glory of God. And we're able to do that because of your sacrifice. Now I have on my shirt because I'm excited and I'm thankful for what God is doing with our vision. The harvest is now. I've been saying it for three years. The harvest is now. And I'm excited that we've been able to make very strong progress in our vision. On the third Sunday, the third Sunday of November, you'll be hearing a little bit more about this on the third Sunday of November, we're going to have a special service of Thanksgiving and you will be hearing some very critical updates related to the harvests now. On that third Sunday in November, I'm asking everyone who is able to do so, everyone who is able to do so, if you can complete your pledge on the third Sunday of November. If you can't complete your pledge, to give generously towards your pledge. I'm asking you to give generously towards your pledge on the third Sunday in November. And for those who have yet to make a pledge, but the Lord is speaking to your heart, I'm asking you on the third Sunday of November to commit, hallelujah, commit to the vision, commit to helping us reap the harvest that is before us. God is doing great things and what a blessing it is to be a part of it. Now the ways to give, the ways to give are on the screen. The ways to give are on the screen now. You can text to give, you can give online, uh, you can give through our P.O. box. However you choose to give, we thank God for it. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness unto us. We recognize, Lord, that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And what an honor, what a privilege it is to be able to give unto you. We pray now in the name of Jesus that you will have your way. And that as we sow, we thank you for increasing the harvest of our righteousness. We thank you for even prospering the seed, Lord. God, I give you glory and I give you thanks for the vision. And I thank you for the progress that we've been able to make towards this vision and we will continue to sow faithfully and in expectation of what you are going to do. We love you, God, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen again. Hallelujah. Brother Jesse White is coming, leading us powerfully before the throne. Come on and worship God. Let's praise God. Let's magnify the name of God together. We want to see him in the light of his glory. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Yeah, we want to see you. We want to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We 
want to see you. Yeah. We want to see you. Come on, let's worship him. We want to see you. The song goes like this. It says, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Come on. Hey. Sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Hallelujah. I want to see you. Come on, let's ask him to open the eyes. Come on, sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you every day. I want to see you. Say, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Hallelujah. I want to see you, hey, to see you high and lifted up, yeah, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, 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 to see you. glory sing pour out your power in love we cry holy 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 hey and we want to see you come on anybody want to see him this morning hey and we want to see you i want to see you for your goodness oh god and we want to see you i want to see your blessed face oh god we want to we want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I love it, I love it, I love it. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. your glory pour out your power in love we cry holy 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 we high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory we want you to pour out your power pour out your power in love as we sing holy holy See you high. 
in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Come on and sing tonight. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy is the Lamb of God. Worthy is the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. How many of you want to see the Lord high and lifted up? How many of you want to see the Lord in his holiness and in his splendor? And thanks be unto God that, that God is available to be seen. Hallelujah. We honor and we praise the name of our God on this morning who is holy and worthy of our praise. God, we give you thanks. God, we give you praise for your faithfulness and your kindness unto us. We thank you, O oh God, because we recognize that we are alive and in your holy place because of your faithfulness unto us. Our prayer today, God, is that you will be glorified. You are certainly high and lifted up. Isaiah said the train of your robe filled the temple and the whole earth was full of your glory. God, thank you for your glory. And we pray today that you will show us your glory. Our prayer right now, God, is that you will have your way, God, and that your glory would rest, God, upon your people today because we know that, God, where your weight is, where your glory is, God, miracles happen, God. Where your glory is, change takes place. Where your glory is, chains fall off. Where your glory is, eyes are open. Thank you, oh God, for showing us your glory. And as the preacher now, I pray that you will anoint me afresh from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Jesus, you be glorified. Have your way. I pray, God, that from our time together in the word, there shall be great fruit that comes forth. God, we shall give you all the credit. We shall give you all the honor. We shall give you all the glory and the praise. Have your way now. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all of God's children say amen. Let all of God's children say amen. 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 Hallelujah. We are in our series returning to the blessed life, returning to the blessed life. And I pray that you are being encouraged and strengthened by this series. I've said every Sunday as we are examining what it means to be blessed, that blessings are not simply that which we can pursue and that which we can possess or material possessions in this world, but blessings are conferred to us by virtue of our position as the sons and daughters of God. And that being in the right position and having the right heart posture means that we are blessed. You got to know that you are blessed today. And we have been taking a look at the Beatitudes, the declarative statements of blessing at the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus says that we are blessed as we have the right heart posture. And we're going to continue this series this morning, taking a look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, you'll find this declarative statement of blessing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. From this declarative statement of blessing, this beatitude, I want to focus our attention on the sermonic subject, the prize of purity. The prize of purity. Did you know that 40% of the world's garbage ends up in the air after burning. Burn garbage literally releases millions of toxins into the air. The sad part is that inhaling the toxins in the air can take one, two years off of your life. That's right, just inhaling polluted air, particularly in industrialized areas. It's damaging to our health. Without us even sometimes being aware, you might not smell a horrible stench. You might not see anything just by virtue of you breathing and existing with pollutants in the air can be detrimental to your health. I know, <laughs> I know what you're thinking. You're never going to take your mask off now. <laughs> p -p -p Polluted air, pollutants in the air can be extremely dangerous. Sometimes the effects are undetected. Sometimes we don't see anything and we don't feel anything. There aren't any internal changes necessarily that we feel. But sometimes we don't know until the damage has become so severe that we're diagnosed with illness. And at other times, polluted air is detected, causes some bodily response. We may smell a horrible stench and want to remove ourselves from wherever we are just to get away from the smell. At other times, we may cough because of the irritants, so sometimes there are bodily responses and we are aware. One sure sign that dust and pollutants and pollen or irritants may be in the air is that oftentimes, depending upon how severe it is, it will affect our vision adversely. Everyone who has allergies in, in the house today ought to be saying amen. Right, right now, you, you, you know that when the pollen is out, your eyes may swell, but, but nobody hits you. <laughs> when, when the pollen is out, your eyes may be red and watering, but uh, you haven't been crying, even though you look like you've been crying for days. Your eyes may itch and you are rubbing them constantly and it's solely because of the pollen that your vision is affected. Not, not only that, but on a more serious level, the World Health Organization says that 90% of the world's population lives in places where the air quality is toxic. Problem is that a recent study revealed a connection between air pollution and irreversible vision loss, particularly age macular degeneration. This, this, this study showed that there was a link between air pollution and leaky blood vessels in the back of the eye and small blobs of fat and protein buildup that causes vision loss. The study showed that just a little exposure to small particles and pollutants had higher rates. People who had this exposure had higher rates of disease. Literally, Polluted air with fine and sometimes microscopic pollutants can lead to compromised vision and blindness. 
These examples, my brothers and sisters, demonstrate this simple fact. Vision can be compromised by pollution. While we may think about big things that compromise vision, like glaucoma and cataracts and eye trauma, the, the reality is vision impairments can also be caused by small pollutants in the air as well. And as I think about how this relates to our physical vision, I, I also believe that, that what we see in the Word of God is that the Word of God teaches us that the same is true of our spiritual vision. That the same is true with the vision uh, from the eyes of our heart. You, you do understand, my brothers and sisters, that there is a vision that goes beyond your physical eyesight. Hallelujah. I, I pray that you understand that there is a vision that goes beyond what you can see with your natural eyes. That This is the kind of vision that Helen Keller spoke about when she said the only thing worse than being blind is having two eyes but no vision. Yes, this, this is the kind of vision that Paul spoke about to the church at Corinth when he said, we walk by faith and not by sight. This is the vision that enables us to see and experience what we cannot see with our physical eyes, but we can see with our spiritual eyes. There are some things that God has for your life. There are some places that God has for you to go, and there are some things that God wants to show you that cannot be seen with your physical eyes, but they can be seen with the eyes of your heart. But here is my concern. The justice pollen and irritants and pollutants harm our physical vision. The irritants of our lives, the impurities of our lives can adversely affect our spiritual vision as well, which is the re this is the reason why some people can have two good eyes but can't see anything from their spiritual eyes because it, it is impaired by the impurities in their mind. It is impaired by the impurities in their desire. Their spiritual vision is impaired by the impurities of their emotions. It is impaired by the impurities of their devotion and the impurities of your heart, your spirit wants to be able to see. Your soul wants to be able to see. Your, your, your mind, the mind of your heart wants to be able to see what God has for your life, but your spiritual sight has been compromised by contamination. And I tell you, this is why the fifth beatitude is so significant for discipleship. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. D do you see it, my brothers and sisters, in this declaration of blessing? Jesus says that the prize of purity in heart is seeing God. That, that the prize of purity in heart is seeing God. Can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, that every disciple that is under the sound of my voice, your earnest desire and the earnest pursuit of your soul, your earnest petition and prayer ought to be to see God. Just as the Greeks came to Philip 
when they came to him in John, they came to him and said, sir, we come that we might see Jesus. I I wonder if I'm talking to anybody on this morning who says, my earnest desire is to see Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I thank God for my church, but my earnest desire is to see Jesus. Yes. I love my pastor, but my earnest desire is to see Jesus. Yes, I thank God for the ministry leader, but my earnest desire is to see Jesus. Yes, I thank God for my family and my friends, but my earnest desire is to see Jesus, that the pursuit of my heart and the desire of my soul is to see Jesus. More than anything, we come that we might see Jesus. Jesus. I I pray if your disciple listening to me that that is your earnest desire, which means then that this declaration of blessing ought to find resonance in your life. Because Jesus says, God approves. God smiles upon the pure in heart. Jesus says that not only are the pure in heart blessed, but because God smiles upon the pure in heart, the prize of such purity is to see God. That purity of heart is the key that unlocks the door to spiritual vision that enables us to see God. That everyone who wants to see God, everyone who says we come that we might see Jesus, Jesus in this declarative statement of blessing lets you know how you can see God. You can see God through a purity in heart. This declaration of blessing says several things to us, and there are a few that I want to bring to the fore, and I pray that you will keep close in your life. First thing is this, this declaration of blessing, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, says that we should be concerned about our internal character over our external reputation. We should be concerned about our internal character over the external reputation. Here it is. Character is who you really are. (laughs) Reputation is who people think you are. Character is who you are in your heart. Reputation is what people may perceive that you are based upon what you portray. I I like the way that UCLA basketball coach John Wooden put it. He said it like this. Character is who you are when nobody is watching. (laughs) Notice, notice, notice that Jesus does not say blessed are the pure in dress. That Jesus does not say, blessed are the pure in appearance. That Jesus does not even say, blessed are the pure in public. That Jesus does not say, blessed are the pure who know how to shout and praise God. But Jesus says, blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart. This is a declarative statement of blessing where Jesus takes us deeper than the surface. Jesus takes his disciples very deep in this statement of blessing. He says, blessed are the pure in heart. Here's what I want you to understand that the heart in Greco-Roman times, in biblical times, it, it didn't simply refer to the physical or organ in our bodies, but it referred to the very core of an individual's being. It, it literally referred to the gut 
of an individual, what was at the very center of their existence. It, it referred to the very bowels, if you will, because it was believed that the gut was the seat of the individual, that everything that an individual was, was in their very core, in the very gut, that the emotions of the person, the thoughts of the person, the soul of the person resided at the very core of the individual. We would compare this today to the statement about having having butterflies in our stomach when we are nervous or having butterflies in our stomach when we are madly in love. So, sometimes we might say, I felt that one in my gut. This, this is the, the, the notion and the connotation behind the word heart as Jesus used it in this pas passage. Jesus is saying, bless are those who are pure at the very core of their being. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who are pure in their thoughts. Blessed are those who are pure in their emotions. Blessed are those who are pure in their spirit. Blessed are those who are pure in their soul. Blessed are those who are pure at the very center of who they are. This is what Jesus is saying, and it's significant. Because sometimes, let's just be honest, in the religious community, we can be very Pharisaic in our walk. Here it is. Here it is. The, the Pharisees, they, they had good religion, but, but, but no relationship. They, 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 they were religious people externally, but internally in their heart, they were unrighteous. This, this is the hypocrisy that Jesus condemns in Matthew chapter 23, verses 27 through 28. Here it is. Jesus says, woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but within are full of dead people's bones and all uncleanness. So you also outwardly appear righteous to others, but within you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Do you see it, my brothers and sisters? They, they, they look real good on the outside. They, they know how to come to church dressed in their three-piece suit. They know how to come to church wearing their church hat. They, they know all of the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. They can Bible quote like none other. They, they can speak the right words and say the right things and they are standing and everybody's looking at them thinking that if anybody knows God, certainly it's the Pharisees and the scribes. But Jesus says that what other people cannot see, I see. Hallelujah. And he says that while you may be clean on the outside, the inside is unclean. The inside is dirty. In your heart, you are impure. Jesus says this hypocrisy is keeping you from the kingdom. And can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, this hypocrisy can be summed up simply as this, having the appearance of life on the outside, but being dead on the inside. I, I, I don't want to have the appearance of life on the outside, but be dead on the inside. I, I don't want to have clean hands, but an impure heart. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to have the appearance of righteousness on the outside while being lawless on the inside. Here it is, if, if I can say it like this. Um, one of the things that I'm learning to do now uh, is to cook. <laughs> that, that's right, I'm, I'm, I'm learning to cook. And uh, the pandemic hasn't, hasn't been so bad. You know, the pandemic, with all of the stressors and all of the negative things that we've had to endure, all the trials and the tests of this pandemic, it's given us some time to develop some new skills. So during the pandemic last year, I said, you know what, I'm going to do what I haven't had to do and what I really don't know how to do that well. I'm going to learn how to cook. And you know what I discovered in my cooking? I discovered 
that just because something looks done on the outside doesn't mean <laughs> it's done on the inside. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh, I, I, I discovered that just because it may look good on the outside, sometimes you can take it out too early. And when you cut it, you discover that even though it looked completed on the outside, it was actually incomplete and cold on the inside. It was still bleeding on the inside. It was still pink on the inside. I, I, and so what I have to do, because I'm not like the culinary specialist in the house, I, I have to use a thermometer. That's right. I, I use a thermometer. I can't just look at it. I can't just smell it. I got to use a thermometer. And I have to take that thermometer and stick it deep down in the middle of whatever I'm cooking to make sure that even though it may look complete on the outside, that the inside temperature says that it's actually done. Come here, child of God. Come come here, pastor. Come here, preacher. Come here, choir member. Come here, ministry leader. Come here, deacon. Come here, trustee. My question is this. If we take the spiritual thermometer of God and place it in the center of your heart and your being, what will the thermometer show? Help me, Holy Spirit. Will the thermometer show that you're still bleeding on the inside? Will the thermometer show that you are still angry on the inside? Will the thermometer show that you are still toxic on the inside? Will the thermometer show that you are still doubting God on the inside? Will the thermometer show that you still like confusion on the inside? Will the thermometer show that while you may look well done on the outside that there's still a great work that is needed on the inside of your soul. Here, here's, here, here's, 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 here's my question. Are you complete? Are you pure on the inside? And, and can I tell you when, can, can I tell you when it's not done on the inside? You know what I have to do? I have to take it and put it back in the heat. <laughs> And can I tell you, uh, yeah, yeah, this is for free right here. Uh, the reason why God sometimes places us in the fiery trials, the reason why God sometimes allows the heat and the pressures of life, the reason why God says I've got to place you sometimes in the heat is because I'm still doing a work on you. And just like the goldsmith, you are being refined like gold. The fire is purging you. The fire is making you whole. The fire is completing you. The fire is making sure that when I bring you out, I can see my character on the inside of your life. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. The second thing that this beatitude says to us is that purity should be our priority. Purity should be our priority. What, what, what is the purity that Jesus is referring to? M most people, when we hear this passage, we automatically associate this purity with chastity. You know, if, if you're, you aren't married, you're practicing abstinence, if you're married, you're practicing fidelity. If you're not married or married, you're not lusting after that woman or that, that man that is not your husband or your wife. Lord, help us. Um, m most people, when they hear this, blessed are the pure in heart, that's the association. S certainly, sexual purity can be a part of what is referred to, but it's not the totality of what is referred to. In fact, I believe that the primary focus for this purity in heart is singular devotion to God. Here it is. The word used for purity in this passage 
has been used to refer to things that were clean, a variety of things that were clean. But, but it's also used to refer to things that are unmixed, undiluted. That, 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 that this, this purity means that, that, that it's not mixed with contaminants. It, it's not diluted with defilements. This unmixed and undiluted part resonated with me because it means that purity of heart in our lives means that our heart is not mixed with the mess of the world. Help me, Holy Spirit, that, that our hearts are not diluted with the distractions of the world, that our hearts are not diluted with the contaminations and carnal pursuits of the world. The reality is, my brothers and sisters, we live in the world, but God is saying that what I desire for your life is for you to be unmixed and undiluted in your heart, that, that you're not going to be straddled the fence, that you're not going to have Jesus in one hand and the world in the other hand. No, that you will be singular in your focus and your commitment to God. Remember the parable of the sower. You, you remember that, that some people are compared to the seed that fell amongst the thorns that choked the seed. And the Bible uses that imagery to compare it to those who are so consumed with the cares of the world that the seed that is sown cannot take root in their lives. The reality is, my brothers and sisters, mixed devotion compromises our growth and, and our walk in God. Here it is. This, this purity means that we're not double-minded. The Bible says that double-minded individuals are unstable in all their ways. Hallelujah. That, that, that we aren't double-minded, that we are singularly consumed with loving God and knowing God. That, that we are one thing individuals. Hallelujah. That, that our goal in life every day of our lives, every moment of our lives is to give God glory, hallelujah, that our goal in life every day of our lives is to see God, that, that we are people like the psalmist that says, one thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and inquire in his temple. Are ah, you a one thing person that we are like people in Matthew 5 33 that says we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us that we are one thing people that say I want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings and the power of his resurrection that we are one thing people who say my desire and my commitment is to pursue after God that anything that stands in the way, I feel like preaching anything that stands in the way of me and God, I'm going to move it out the way. I'm not going to allow it to hinder my growth and my walk in God. That anyone that stands in the way, I'm not going to allow them to hinder my growth and my walk in God. That any desire that stands in the way, I'm not going to allow it to hinder my growth and my pursuit after God that I am not going to live double-minded. James 4, 8 puts it like this. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. That, that, that we must be pure in our pursuit of God, and this should be our priority. P purity should be our priority. Listen, if you go to a restaurant 
And um, they take the dishes off the table where some other family just got up. And they bring those dishes that are mixed <laughs> with the, the scraps that were left over on the plate and say, now we're going to serve your food on this. <laughs> you you, you want to talk to the manager and you give them a piece of your mind and you wouldn't even stay at the restaurant because you say how unsanitary. You go all on social media and blast them and tell nobody else to eat that. If you went to the hotel, where are my germaphobes? And, and uh, they gave you dirty towels. You, 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 you run down to the front desk or call down to the front desk and give them a piece of your mind and you probably leave and say, I'm not staying here. If you went to the store to get a good outfit and, and they had a section that said, these are the dirty clothes. You think you were in the wrong establishment. We don't even drink dirty water. We don't, we won't purify. We won't, we won't even drink tap. Cause tap has too many contaminants in it. So we spend our good money on Ascension and Deer Park and Fuji. We want good water. Purity is big on our list of priorities. Especially in this time of the pandemic, my goodness, if anybody just cough just a little bit, Running and getting your hands sanitized and you bathing, you baptizing yourself in sanitizer. My question is, the level of priority that we give to purity of things, do we give that same level of priority to purity in heart that if we won't accept dirty dishes and if we won't accept dirty towels and if we won't drink dirty water and if we won't drive dirty cars and if we don't want to wear dirty clothes then we should not settle for a dirty and defiled heart this i know many like me look at this passage and say this is unattainable. I mean, how in the world can I be pure, undiluted in any way in my heart? Can I tell you, this is something that you and I cannot accomplish in our own strength. I'll say that again. This is something that you and I cannot accomplish in our own strength. As a matter of fact, I believe that the Beatitudes, the standard that Jesus conveys uh, for disciples in this passage ought to drive us to our knees to acknowledge our dependence upon the grace and the mercy of God, our dependence upon the power and the spirit of God to accomplish that which we cannot accomplish in our own strength. So sometimes my brothers and sisters, you got to come before the Lord and say Lord, I want to be pure but I need your help. Hallelujah. I want to be clean but I need your help. I want to be undefiled but I need your help. Have you ever had to pray that? Hallelujah. Have you ever had to pray to God to purify you and cleanse you and wash you and somebody can testify that when you pray that prayer in earnest, uh, faith and when you prayed that prayer in sincerity, God answered that prayer and he met you. Somebody knows that God will cleanse your heart. Hallelujah. Somebody knows that God will take the taste out of your mouth. Somebody knows that God will take the desires from you. Somebody knows that God will help you to be pure in heart. And how does he do it? John 15, 3, as he talks about the disciples being vine connected to the vine. He tells them already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Can I tell you the word of God is God 
like soap and water. Hallelujah. The word of God, my brothers and sisters, is what God uses to transform your mind. It's what God uses to cleanse your heart. It's what God uses to change your affections. It's what God uses to make you pure. Is there anybody here that can thank God for the cleansing of your heart? He, he cleanses, he cleanses, he washes, he sets free, he delivers, he restores, he heals, he makes us whole, he makes us brand new. Hallelujah. This is why you can look at where you were when you first came to the Lord and look at where you are now and you can say, thanks be unto God. He's brought me from a mighty long way. I, oh, I feel like preaching right about here. Is there anybody here that can testify today? He has brought me from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way and I don't look the same as I looked yesterday. I don't do the same things. I don't go to the same places, and that's because the Lord is purifying my heart. Last thing I'll say, and I got to let you go. Here it is. The prize of purity is seeing God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Here it is. The prize of purity is seeing God. Here it is. In Exodus 33, Moses prays, Lord, show me your glory. And God responds to him, no one can see me and live. The question is, can we see God? If God says, no one can see me and live, the question is, can we see God? I want to tell you unequivocally the answer is yes. How, how do we see God? We see the manifestations of his glory. E even if in a provisional way right now, even if it's not in his full radiance, thanks be unto God that we can see God. Hallelujah. The, the prophet said, I saw God. Isaiah said, I saw him high and lift it up. That's right, yeah. E Ezekiel says, I, I saw the Lord as will in the middle of a will. He, he says, I saw the Lord. Jacob there in Bethel said, I saw the Lord. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. That's right. Paul on the road of strength, yeah, as he was there, he said, I saw the Lord, and everybody around me did not see the bright light, but I saw the Lord, and just that vision of the Lord changed my attitude, changed the whole trajectory, and course of my life and it's this same Paul who says for now we see in a mirror dimly then face to face now I know in part then I shall know fully and even as I have been fully known Paul says yes we can see God even if it's dim right now even if it's faint right now somebody you can see the manifested glory of God in your your life each and every day if your heart is pure. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, those with devout hearts can look at the world and they will see what's in their heart. But when you are pure in heart, you can look at the world and see the manifest glory of God. I feel like preaching. Is there anybody here that says that's why I can't go outside without praising God? Because I look outside and I see the radiance of his glory. I see his ability and his miraculous power to make something out of nothing. That's why even in the middle of the pandemic, I'm still praising God. Because while everybody else was just looking at rising numbers and listening to the news report, I I was 
seeing God the preserver and God the one who protects and God the one who say is there anybody here that says you can see him yes I can see him that that's why when we come to church there's some people who sit like the frozen chosen and they act like they don't poke a favor by being in the sanctuary but there are other people who said I didn't come to see anybody but Jesus and I see him working I see him moving I see him healing I see him saving and I can't help but praise and magnify the name of God I wonder if I've got anybody here on this Sunday morning who says I see God I see him each and every day hallelujah as I look at the food in my refrigerator I see See God, my Jehovah Jireh, who is supplying and providing my need every day. When I get up and I look at myself in the mirror, I see God because I am what I am by his grace. And I see the grace and the mercy of God on my life. I see the Lord because God's manifested glory is all throughout the world. That this promise to see God is here and now. But it's also future. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. That, that yes, I see him in a provisional way now. Yes, I see him dimly right now. Oh, but how many of you know that one of these old days, we shall see him face to face. I feel like preaching. Is, is there anybody here on this Sunday morning that says, I thank God for the promise that these old days I shall see God. Is there anybody here that says one of these old days I shall see him as he is? I'll see him as he is and I'll know as I am known. I hear the old saints singing that old hymn. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face uh, there to sing forever of his saving grace. Oh! the streets of glory let me lift my voice cares are past home at last ever ever to rejoice can I tell you on that blessed day when I see Jesus somebody ought to say amen all of my trials all of my struggles all of my heartaches will be over can I tell you just one look at him just one look at my Redeemer. Just one look at my Savior. Just one look at the man who died for me. Just one look at the lover of my soul. We'll make all of the trials. We'll make all of the pain. We'll make all of the suffering worth it. And in one second, I will experience greater glory than all of the days that I've lived here on the earth. I gotta let you go. But I heard a very powerful story that reminds me of what we'll feel when we see Jesus. There was a man by the name of William Dyke. And when he was 10 years old, he was blinded in an accident. But despite his disability, he graduated with honors. And while he was in school, he fell in love with his school sweetheart. He was blind and he had not seen her, but he loved her. He decided that he would propose and she said yes 
but not long before the wedding he had eye surgery in the hopes that his sight and his vision would be recovered but William he decided that he would wait until the wedding day to take the bandages that were put on his eyes he would wait until the wedding day to see if the surgery worked and so on that wedding day he had the bandages on his eyes and as his bride was coming down he had the bandages on his eyes when his bride got to that altar he had the bandages on his eyes the audience waited with bated breath to see whether or not the surgery worked and so they removed the bandages from his eyes and when he looked at her his words were your more beautiful than I ever imagined. Can I tell you, my brothers and sisters, when we see Jesus, when the bandages are removed from our eyes, we're going to say the same thing. You're more beautiful, yeah, than I ever imagined. Is there anybody that says I can't wait to see Jesus. When I see him, I'll discover his light is more radiant than I imagined. His love is greater than I imagined. Say yeah, yeah. Say yeah, yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Jesus says it's about the heart. Beyond the surface, beyond the appearance, are you pure? Do you have unmixed, undiluted devotion to God? Do you have a singular focus for the things of God? Is purity in heart your priority? Is it the center of your priority? My brother, my sister, can I tell you the prize of being pure in heart is seeing God. The prize of being pure in heart is seeing God Day in your daily life, the manifested glory of the Lord in a provisional way. But it's also the future hope and expectation that we have of seeing Jesus in the fullness of his glory. And so my brother, my sister, you may be saying right now, How is that going to happen for me? How can I be pure in heart? How can I be singularly focused? Can I tell you, you can't do it in your own strength. 
You need God's help. And I am a living witness and others are a living witness that God will cleanse your heart. God will cleanse your soul. God will purge your affections. God will purge your heart. Somebody can testify right now in the comment section. He will cleanse you. He will save you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will transform you. He will wash you. He will make you whole. He will renew you. That's the kind of God we serve. And he's able to do it through Jesus Christ. He's able to do it because Jesus has died. And so right now, my brother, my sister, today is the day for you to say yes to Jesus. Today is the day for you to see God do something new in your life. Today is the day for you to see the manifested glory of God in your deliverance. Today is the day for you to see God. All you have to do is surrender, surrender and submit your life to him. He says today, today, today. You can see me do something new in your life. If you're here right now and you need a church home, there's no better day than today. Today, you want to see God in his manifested glory in a provisional way by connecting with a place called church where people can encourage you and pray for you and support you in the Lord. Today is the day for you to see God. Believer, right now, right now, right now, here's what I want you to know. The best is always still yet to come because we seek God in a provisional way right now, but oh, thanks be unto God. We will see him face to face as he is in eternity. And so right now, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, I want you to text BGC New Life because God is able to give you new life to 75787. Text BGC New Life to 75787. If you're here right now and you want to connect with a place called church, I want you to text BGC Join to 75787. You don't have to wait, hallelujah, till we come back in the building. You don't have to wait till next week because next week is not promised. If God is speaking to your heart right now, hallelujah, right now is the time for you to say yes. Text BGC Join to 75787 and a New Life Counselor, one of our New Life Counselors will be in contact with you to walk you through the next steps. Hallelujah. We're going to give the benediction, but then Brother Jesse White is going to sing. Hallelujah. He's going to sing a song that they used to sing in the church of my youth. When I see Jesus. Amen. When I see Jesus. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor. For the worship and the word, we thank you that we are blessed. We give you honor and we give you thanks for purity in heart and for the promise that we shall see you. Have your way. Be glorified in our lives today and every day. Thank you that we shall see you. Hallelujah. Thank you that we shall see you. Thank you that we shall see you see you. In Jesus' name we pray that all of God's children say, Amen. Come on, when I see you. I've learned how to live holy. I've learned how to live right. I've learned, I've learned For if I
Amen. When I see Jesus, Amen. When I see the men that died for me, way back on Calvary, Amen. When I see Jesus, hey, amen. When I see the man that died for me way back over 2,000 years ago, hey, amen. All of my trials, all of my struggles, They will be over, over, over When I see Jesus When I see Jesus I can't wait to see Jesus hey, hey, Amen Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I can't wait till I get there. I can't wait till I get there. Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. 